In this clip, we are going to look at the selection tree in detail. So let's first understand what's a selection tree. It's a window that displays the structure of the consultant's files in various hierarchical views. It is important to note that the structure that is displayed in this window is defined by the application that was used to create the file. So the structure of the Revit file will look different from that of a civil 3D file. Similarly, it will look different from that of an Archicad file. So for example, this is the hierarchy of NWD file. We can see the name of the NWD file at the top and all the Revit files that were used to create that. And this is the hierarchy of NWF file. You would notice that there's no file name at the top. The idea behind displaying the structure of the model in the selection tree is so that we can expand the hierarchy of that structure and then select objects from the selection tree. So let's now jump into the Navisworks file and look at all these things in detail. So I'm in the Navisworks window now. And as you could see, I've got the Hospital Federated NWD file open currently because this is the file we had opened in the last clip. If I look at the selection tree, I can see the name of the NWD file at the top and all the Revit files underneath that. Let me resize this selection tree so we can see the names properly. So if I expand any of these Revit files now, I'll see all the levels created inside those Revit files. As I mentioned in module one, by default, when you open a Revit file in Navisworks, it is automatically broken down into different levels. And this is based on the default settings available inside the global options. The hierarchy of an NWF file looks pretty much similar to this one, with the only difference that you will not see the name of the file at the top. So let me go and open the NWF file of this federated model. Radio. So this is the NWF file. And as you can see at the top, there is no file name listed in the selection tree. However, the hierarchy of all these files is exactly the same. Now on the top of the selection tree, there's a little list. If I click on this list here, I can see three settings here. There's a fourth setting that is displayed. If you've got sets created in the current Navisworks file, we don't have any sets created. That's why sets is not listed. Standard is the default display, which means that the hierarchy is displayed based on the standard settings. If I go and change this to compact, now when I expand any of these consultant files, I can see the levels, but nothing inside the levels. Similarly, if I go and change it to properties, this is a really handy setting. What this will do is it'll show me all the metadata or all the smart properties available inside this file. So the whole idea is I can now select objects based on the properties. So for example, if I want to select all the items that have name equal ducts, I can expand items. And then if I expand name, and then scroll down. So if I click on ducts, on the right side in the properties window, it's telling me there are seven items that have name equal ducts in the current file. Similarly, if I need to select items based on types, I can expand the type category here, and it shows me all the item types. If I want to select all the item type that are air terminals, I'll click on it. It's now telling me on the right in the properties window, there are 1,061 items selected. That means there are 1,061 items that have their item type equal air terminals. Changing back to the standard display, which is the default display, it also shows us all these items wherever they are available. So understanding the hierarchy and the structure of the selection tree is really important. In the next clip, we are going to talk about properties window in detail. See you there.